Hello and welcome to the March episode of Inside the Wolverines Den Athletic Department segment. For this month, I had a chance to sit down with two of our head coaches here at Essex County College and sophomore student athlete Indian Norman. First up, in honor of Women's History Month, we wanted to highlight achievements and accomplishments of one of the most successful and tenured coaches here at Essex County College. That is none other than head women's soccer coach Monique Edward. Coach Edward has been at the helm of the Lady Wolverine soccer program for 10 seasons and has had a lot of success over the years. Coach Edward has amassed 70 total wins and a winning percentage of 648 in 114 total games. In 10 seasons under Coach Edward, the Lady Wolverines have accumulated the following team accolades, three conference championships, seven region 19 tournament appearances, five appearances in the NJCAA Region 19 Championship game, including three consecutive appearances over the last three seasons. The Wolverines captured three NJCAA Region 19 Championships, and for that success, Coach Edward is a three-time winner of the NJCAA Region 19 Coach of the Year. That is certainly success that needs to be highlighted in lieu of the month of March, Women's History Month. I had a chance to catch up with Coach Edward to talk a little bit more about her thoughts on the time here at Essex and what drives her to be successful. I'm excited to be joined by head women's soccer coach here at Essex County College, Monique Edward. Coach, thank you for taking the time to join me. How are you? I'm doing good, uh, Mr. Daddy. It's my pleasure to, to talk to you today. So in honor of Women's History Month, we wanted to highlight one of our most successful and longest tenured coaches here at Essex County College. I know that it feels like just yesterday when you took over the head coaching position here, but you are now the wise veteran on our coaching staff. Um, when I tell you that you have been the head coach here at Essex County College for 114 games, what is your initial reaction? Wow. I'll, I'll, the thing is, I don't count about games, how many games that we play, and then it doesn't even like sound like I've been there for that long, but it's feel like I've been at Essex because I was a student at Essex myself. So it's been like for a while. Right. So, so you've been the head coach for, for 10 seasons. Now you're in year 11. Um, when, when were you um, a player here at Essex? Um, I was a player at Essex. I believe it was like uh, the late uh, between 97 and I took a year off and came back, I think it was between 98 or 99. And then um, I transferred to uh, Lee University, um, probably like around 2002. And then you came back and, and took over the program here and um, time flies. Time fly, I came back in 2000, I believe 2011, but I was back in New York, probably like around 2008. I wasn't really interested on coaching until I get a phone call from uh, one of my former uh, coach I used to work with and uh, asking me if I need to come over to Essex. I really didn't want to come back into coaching, but then I came, talked to Mr. Knight and, and we talked, it was just like uh, daughters and fathers and daughters talking. And then we talk about our time at Essex when I was a player there. And then we talk and said how I could contribute if I come to Essex and we talk for a while. And the next thing I know, I was just crossing my finger off and I said, oh God, I don't think I want to be coach. And he called me and said, well, the job is yours if you want to come. Then I decided to, uh, to come to Essex. So coach, in, in your 10 seasons, you have over 70 wins, three conference championships, three region championships, seven region 19 tournament appearances, and you are a three-time region 19 coach of the year. I, I think, uh, you made the right decision there. Uh, how have you been able to not only achieve that level of success, but sustain such a high level of success for an extended period of time? Uh, the thing is, it's not an easy job to do, but at the same time, it's depend on the players that you're recruiting. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we have at Essex is just like, we don't have a lot of local uh, soccer players. They will come, but they don't last long. So you have to go elsewhere to bring a couple of kids to come in and stay. But one of the things that I learned like from my previous coach, it just, you have to bring the exact student athletes, kids that want to learn, 
not even to learn the game and to want to be like a student. You cannot just bring, both cannot walk out of one another. You have to be like good student that want to come to school and willing to put the hard work to, to become a good, uh, a good uh, soccer player or any, any other sport. When you have both of them working together, that's how I think we could achieve what we achieved today. Awesome, excellent. And you know what, I don't know if you've been reading my script here, but you answered my, my third question as well. So, you know, on that answer about, you know, what, what you look for in the foundation outside of actual the skill on, on the field, what you look for um, in a prospective student athlete. So um, you started here at Essex as a student athlete, as we you talked about, and uh, you know you had the opportunity to develop and um, you know now become a, a coach. Uh, you are now in a position to help young, you know, young adults, young student athletes develop academically as people and athletically. What does that mean to you to be able to do that? Uh, it's been it's been a lot because I think reason. I become who I am today because I remember as a student at it when I just come to the country, I was a young girl, didn't know a lot of people on Essex, um, didn't know about the school system here because I was just new, just coming from a different country and then go straight to college, not even go straight to college, but I didn't know how the process worked. And then me, I was a shiny little kid that come to Essex. I think I know everything, but I didn't know then I have to struggle because of the grading system is different than what I learned from home. Then I struggle a little bit. Then I took a year off and come back. And there are a couple of students that came the year that I came after that I seen how they progress. And then from them, I learned how to ask for help if I need to. And there are other people at Essex, like people I don't even remember. I remember one of my uh, English professor uh, Miss O, uh, God, Stella. I remember her first name. I cannot remember her last name. She was my English teacher. And then one day she called me and then we sat and we talked. And then she told me, this is what we have to do. If you need help, there are always have people here to help you out. And I think from then I learned a lot from her. And then I think that's given me like a great, a great sense of understanding how you can achieve because if you have a problem, you don't ask, nobody will know that you need help. But from what she taught me, that make a big difference in me. And then when I come back to Essex and I met like a couple other people, learn how to do certain things, I said, well, this is what I want to do. So from then, when the kids come in, we couldn't them and I know exactly what to do for them. If I don't know what to do, I will always go to somebody and say, say hey, I have this kid that has some problem, how we can help that kids out. I think that's that's how I, I learn from other people. And I, I think that's great. You know, it, it comes full circle. Um, and, and, yes, it is. And I think some of the, the best teachers, the best coaches, when you when you draw on your experience that you had in that position, it, it makes you that much better um, as a coach and as a, a teacher because you went through that and, and, and you know how to then almost draw that out of some of our student athletes. Um, and you can relate to them on a similar level because you know what some of your international student athletes who come and you know what they're going through. True, true, true. Great that you're able to, to draw on those experiences. And um, what would you say is, is the biggest challenge? Um, I think for international student as a whole, it just the culture shock because you got a bunch of kids. Me, I recruit a lot of kids from the Caribbean. Uh, you got a lot of kids you bring here that doesn't doesn't know anything about the cold weather. Then you cut. Then they come in. They probably just like enjoy a good month or two. Warm weather. Then everything else gonna be cold. That's gonna be like a cultural shock for them. So it's gonna take, some of them will adjust so fast, but some of them don't. It just will take them time to adjust to the system and to adjust to the, uh, to the weather. I think that's one of the biggest issues that we have with some of the student athletes. That's awesome. And, and it, it's awesome that, that you're able to, to now serve in this position and um, you know, become an inspiration to, to some of these young student athletes and be able to help them develop and, and move on. And, 
you've been able to do that every single year. We have student athletes graduating and, and moving on and earning scholarship opportunities at four-year institutions. And that that's um, awesome that you're able to inspire that, that type of you know, turnover and um, development that, you, that you've done here. And I'd like to follow that up with, you know, you're inspiring these young, young women to succeed. Where did your insp inspiration and determination come from? My inspiration coming like from two different people. One was my mother. Um, growing up back home is just like, I don't say I was rich and I was poor, but for some of the women, some of them had to leave their home country to go somewhere else for their kids to have a better education. That's what I got from my mother. At a young age, she has to leave home, go to a different country. So they could send money back home so I could go to a better school to get a better education. So seeing that, I always wanna do good by her side because she sacrificed a lot for us in order for us to get something. And then another person that make a great example in my life was one of my dad's younger sister, her name is Jocelyn Edward. She, we wasn't like soccer players. Um, I remember like back in the 80s and it was like summer, summertime and everybody wanna do a couple things. And she decided to have a club team. None of us don't even know, we watch soccer, but we never know how to play soccer. I was probably like, 12 years old or 30. I was the youngest one in the middle. And then she decided, well, I'm gonna do like a club team for just for the summertime. That's why I end up playing soccer. She always believed in me. She said, that's what you wanna do, even though that's all were 13 kids. My aunt was the oldest one in that group. So we just, that was it. But me, the minute that she want me to play for that team, and then I think I was part of belong somewhere. And that's where like my love for soccer started. And then from then I never stopped playing soccer. So my uh, inspiration coming from her, she was always believing believe in me. Like she said, whatever you want to do, I always see you going somewhere. Don't ever stop the listen. People will say that you cannot do this and couldn't do that. You, you always gonna have my support. So that's where my inspiration coming from. And now you use that and, and you provide that same opportunity to, to your student athletes and you give them an opportunity to further their education and, and soccer career. So I, I think that's amazing. You know, you're, you're an amazing person to work with and you know, I'm glad to have you on my staff. And, Thank you so much. You know, you're, here's to another hundred games, right, coach? <laughs> I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Coach, I want to thank you for taking the time and, and you know, to peel back the curtain a little bit on your, your time here at Essex and, and prior to becoming the head coach here. I know that this year has been unique and difficult to navigate, but we're looking forward to seeing you back on the field again soon when uh, August 21 rolls around. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you, Mr. Daddy. Thank you for having me. Special thanks go out to coach and, and we certainly do look forward to watching you continue to coach and inspire your student athletes each year. With the outdoor track and field season less than a month away, I had time to sit down with head coach Lionel Leach and sophomore Indian Norman to talk about the track and field program. Welcome everyone. Today I have the pleasure of being joined by two special guests. Our head coach for track and field and cross country, Lionel Leach, and sophomore track and field student athlete, Indian Norman. I want to thank both of you for taking the time to join me today. Thanks for having us. So here we are less than a month away from the start of the outdoor track and field season. And it's been a um, very up and down and challenging year to say the least. When Essex takes the track for the beginning of the 2021 season, it will have been over 365 days since the last competition. For both coach and India, when you hear that, what are the initial thoughts that come to your mind and your initial feeling that as this day approaches, you know, India, let's start with your thoughts. Um, well, I'm kind of nervous to see how I perform because, you know, it's been a while, but I'm excited to finally get back and, you know, it'll be interesting on, I think I'll still be able to perform well because we've been training and everything, trying to get work ourselves back up to where we were last year. So I think it'll be good. 
but it's definitely disappointing that it's been so long since we've been running. Is it a combination of excitement, nerves? Yes, definitely. Too? <laughs> definitely. Coach, what, what goes through your mind when I tell you that? Wow. And, uh, and finally, right? So it's, yeah, actually today actually makes a year since the last time we did compete. And it's ironic that we're doing this interview today because today starts the national indoor championships, which was the last, last meet that we ran in. So it's hard to believe that it's been basically a full year since we've competed. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety there, not only on the athletes, but as a staff, our staff, we're eager to get out there. And it's like, uh, it's like riding a horse. You've been holding back, holding back, holding back. And less than, you know, two, three weeks, you know, we're able to come down and get down the home stretch and be able to let go and let these student athletes compete. And, we, you know, we're going to do fine. Um, we've been working really hard. They've been working very hard. Um, and, and the great thing about it is that while there has been many trials and tribulations over this 365 year time period, uh, um, days that uh, we've been going through this, they've been able to stay focused, keep their head on straight, uh, do well academically, and still practice to the level that they need to compete at such a high level. So I'm really, really proud proud of them and, and can't wait for that first for that first meet. Yeah, it's definitely forced uh, everybody to think outside the box. And I, on numerous occasions, you know, I've walked outside and, and we're using the parking garage as, you know, as a track. So um, that's a testament to, to everybody involved, you know, keeping the student athletes focused and just, just finding a way. Uh, India, what would you say has been the most challenging aspect of this year for you personally? just having to hear everything has been pushed back and pushed back when you're like looking forward to running oh we're going to be running in a couple of weeks but then once it comes up things are just pushed back so it's just hard sometimes to stay motivated and believe like oh we'll eventually get there because once every time we've been close it just keeps going pushed back but i know it'll all be worth it all the training will be worth it soon india um back to you you came in as a freshman um, on a partial scholarship. You worked hard in the fall. That carries over to the indoor season where you won uh, gold in the Colgate games in your respective event. Um, and then you have an opportunity to compete at nationals. Ultimately, your work ethic and ability to improve earned you a full scholarship. Talk a little bit about your motivation um, and what your first year like, you know, your first year was like here um, from a competitive standpoint. Well, my first year was really good. I, we came in and we had great training from the beginning. We had a great cross country season, a great indoor season. So as well as training hard, it was actually also fun because like there was no like complications with COVID or everything. We just had a regular season. So we got to do all the regular things of a college um, athlete. So it was, fun. it was fun. So it, it motivated me to continue to keep going because like I enjoyed it. Coach, as a follow-up, what, what is it about India's performance and, and presence on the team that makes her such a valuable asset to the program? Her dedication to her academics, her, her dedication to the sport, and the dedication to herself. I mean, you know, India came here in, in September, and we didn't know what to expect. Uh, she didn't know what to expect from us. We really didn't know what to expect from her. Uh, but we sat down, we put a plan together. We said, this is what we want to do. What do you want to do? She told us what her aspirations were. And she worked hard to achieve those goals. So I, I just remember now, you know, I've been coaching for quite a while, but, you know, you always get a little antsy when you're, when your student athletes are participating. And I remember, and Andy, you might not even know this, but, uh, when you were in the finals of, uh, of the Colgate and the hurdles, I couldn't even watch the race. I had my head in between my legs because I just couldn't watch. I was just, I was just so nervous. I was, I was nervous for you um, and, and what this would mean and how this would bolster, that race would bolster your career uh, as well as have, you know, four-year institutions start to look at you. Um, but again, we didn't know what to expect, right? Because every week was a little challenging, right? That five-week series. And then we go uh, indoor season, uh, the rest of the indoor season, and, and you do well, and 
and we go to nationals and and basically you know we're right there you run you know a couple of great races and then you know the pandemic hits so but at the end i mean india has been one of those leaders on the team um she stayed steadfast she works hard and she's willing to try new things and and what we did notice over the course of last year is that she has many talents and many different events so you know, this year we're going to try to have her as a multi-athlete and do the do do the penta, and she, we believe that she would do very well in that. And not only be well, uh, we look for her to be at the podium in in South Plains in Texas at our national championship. And the last student athlete that we had to actually do well in in the multis on the on the women's side was you know about four or five years ago. And she went on to Texas and, and had an extraordinary year. So extraordinary career. So we're looking for the same for India, but it's just been her dedication, her want and and even more importantly than any everything is that her her family, her parents are really strong, really behind her and they push her um, and they keep her focused as well. So, you know, she's well-rounded and, and I'm really, really proud of her. And I just look for big, big things for her this outdoor season. Great. And Talk a little bit about that success um, individually and as a team. So building off of the team success from last year um, and your personal success on the track, what is the ultimate goal for India Norman and Essex County College track and field um, as a team for the outdoor season? Um, just everybody doing their best, putting their um, talent forward. My goal is to get into a four-year institution that I will go on to next year and be successful. So that's just the ultimate goal, really, is just moving on, doing your best to move on and continuing to be successful in the future for my future. Are there specific um, aspirations or thresholds that you're looking at from times and certain events, or is that just trusting the training and, and then those results will, will take care of itself from a time perspective? I definitely do have a lot of goals for each of the individual um, event in the multis because I know I have to sit, hit certain marks to make it to certain schools. So I know I have to put my training, trust my training, train hard, trust my training and everything will unfold. Coach, what, what does success look like for Essex County College track and field this season? Well, a couple things, right? Number one is one of the first goals is to stay healthy. Um, and that means COVID and non-COVID. Right, make sure that we protect our student athletes. We walk away from the season with with no injuries, right? Um, and then placing in the top three at the national championships in both the men and the women. Um, going back in history, uh, and I've I've tried to go back all the way and gone all the way back to in the seventies. Um, there's not been a time where the men and the women are both at a national championship at placed in the top five uh, in the same meet. So that's that's one of the goals. And, you know, I really believe that the team that we have assembled um, will not only reach the podium and become All-American on the track, but they'll also do it academically as well. And that's one of the main things that I'm really proud about. You know, our students do very well in the classroom and, and continue to excel in that area. So, and that that, um, that academic success, um, just to add a note, that the, the women's indoor track and field team did actually finish number two in the country in overall team GPA. So that, that's definitely something that we're proud of here at Essex. And I know India and the rest of the team and coach, you're, you're definitely proud of, of those results as well, not just the results on the track. So let me, let me take you back to all of last weekend. Uh, we had four former Wolverines competing in the ACC and SEC indoor track and field championships. All four were NJCA All-Americans here at Essex, and they're on full, full scholarships at the University of Florida, Florida Clemson, and Mississippi State. Um, I know you had a little bit of a watch party. Um, how does seeing that level of success motivate your current student athletes? Coach, how do you use it as motivation? And then India, you can answer afterwards. If you were watching, does that motivate you just a little bit more. Coach, go ahead. Well, first, it, it motivated both the athletes that competed in the meet as well as our athletes here. 
One of the things that I really wanted to do is to really bridge the gap together where both where both individuals or both groups, right? People that are coming from the four-year institution as well as uh, the ones that are here, they get to know each other and they both respond to each other uh, and work with each other in a way that uh, benefits both sides. And what I mean by that, they actually get to see each other and if they work hard, they apply themselves while they're here. This is the ultimate, not only the ultimate goal, but this is what you will achieve when you follow the program, you follow the script. So to see them compete at their national championships, it was great. Uh, and for them, and specifically, you know, we, we talked with Navasky and Leon, actually right after they competed, they jumped on the Zoom call uh, and have the athletes here uh, actually not only cheer them on, but congratulate them, you know, 10, 15 minutes after they competed was really, you know, I think at one point was a little bit overwhelming, overwhelming for them because they were shocked that we were all watching and, and supporting them. But it also gave them a little bit of uh, a motivation because, you know, the students here look up to those guys, right? They, they look up to them and say, hey, that they worked hard while they were here. That's where they achieved. We want to be where they are now, right? And, and even better. So it works both ways. Uh, and uh, I, that day was a proud day for, for our program to actually, uh, and it was two different meets going on at the same time. So we were flipping back and forth for meets, uh, trying to catch everybody compete, but to actually have uh, students here, right, at the institution here now, watch, you know, students that actually came and did the same things and went through the same things of practicing outside in the cold and not having a tractor and waking up seven o'clock in the morning and practicing in the gym, the same things that they're going through now, these student athletes did it back then uh, while they were here and look where they are now. So there, there is a method to the madness and if you follow that and, and follow what we do and, and, and listen to what we do, uh, what we say, um, there are, there's a higher level that you can achieve. And, and that was what was most fulfilling for me. India, having two of those student athletes that competed just to be your, your teammates last season, um, is there a little bit of added motivation watching what they're doing now and, and just putting yourself there that, you know, if I continue to work hard, you know, that's where I can be? Is there a little out of motivation there? And, and do you keep in touch with um, any of those two student athletes, Navasky and Leon? Yeah, it definitely does motivate me seeing them at the level they are now, because I just was with them last year, training with them last year. Um, and yeah, I definitely do reach out to them and congratulate them, so talk to them. So yeah, it's really nice to see them doing well, especially now we came, we were just together last year. And I think that that's the beauty of, of the culture here and the culture of success and, and just trying to build off of each year and, 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 you know, just motivate everybody and continue that strong culture we have at Essex. Uh, we're definitely looking forward to seeing more of our student athletes and including India and move on to four year institutions and to continue academic and athletic uh, results in their, their pursuits. I'm looking forward to watching the team and, and uh, the, on the track this year. And I hope that, uh, but to have two, the two of you back on later on in the season and talk about actual results. Thanks for taking the time and, and best of luck this year. Thank you. Thank you to Coach Leach and India Norman and Coach Edward. A lot of good stuff here from our Wolverines athletic program. Next month, for the first time in over a year, we will actually be talking about results and ongoing competition for our outdoor track and field team. Thank you for stepping inside the Wolverines Den for the athletic update. We will see you next time.